to you all. Um, since I am um, located in, in Germany, in the beautiful city of Cologne, um, I, uh, for me, it's all, uh, already late. So it's 10 p.m. in the evening. Um, yeah, uh, Otavio already introduced uh, me. Um, and as he said, I'm working uh, for, for Opitz Consulting as a chief architect and integration evangelist. Um, if I do nothing uh, technology related, um, I'm a proud father of a son. I passionate uh, football, soccer fan and player. And um, yeah, um, in addition, I love listening to good handmade music, uh, so heavy metal music, music and also attending festivals um, in, my, in my spare time if there is any left. Um, yeah, today I'm going to talk about the topic uh, of integration and I, I put it uh, into a title, so cloud native integration. So this topic, um, this topic um, is uh, my passion since I started my professional career because when I started my professional career, I directly started with implementing uh, integration solutions and, and SOA-based um, architectures and uh, using the Oracle stack. So we started, started with um, Oracle SOA Suite um, 10G and uh, went all the way up until today to all the cloud stuff. And um, what I'm going to talk today is um, to um, share my um, yeah my ideas how integration sh solutions should be built today because a lot of things are happening today so technology is evolving very fast concepts are evolving very fast and we need to keep track with that and um, the way like we build integration solutions a long time is no longer applicable for most of the use cases because the parameters changed. So I made up my mind and, and thought, um, how should we build integration architectures today and solutions? So, and this is will be the content of the next uh, 40 minutes. And I will start with, with my vision. So first of all, what is integration? Um, integration um, ensures that the data is where it is needed, when it is needed, and in the form in which is it needed. So basically, <clears throat> we, um, we try to, to integrate um, yeah, systems data um, with each other. Uh, so um, heterogeneous systems um, with different uh, data semantics and data formats we try to, to, to integrate. Sounds easy, but it isn't easy, like we will see in, in following slides. Um, integration for me is the key um, to moder modernize businesses and to establish new business models. So um, to get from a product centric world, uh, a project centric world, sorry, to a more product product centric application delivery model, because um, integration solutions from my perspective help, uh, um, helps to, to, to solve data silos and consolidate data. So some years back, um, we also talk about, we have, we have things like system integration, we have things like data integration. For me today, data and, and system integration is, uh, are no longer disjoint. So they, they converge together. So there is no real yeah, no real border between those two disciplines. And they are um, depending on each other. And so, so dissolving the data silos um, is the key to also enable uh, new technologies and concepts. Um, so from my perspective, without a, a solid and consistent integration strategy, it is not not possible to adapt modern concepts like machine learning, artificial intelligence, because for those concepts and technologies, you need a rock solid um, and consolidated um, yeah, uh, data basis. 
and this is something we can realize we can we can build with with uh, integration solutions and we also need to bring our old legacy world uh, to the new digital world so to to bring those two worlds together because in most of the cases we don't start on a green field right and we need to to bring those two worlds together because we cannot throw everything away what we've done so far so we we need to integrate it somehow so the overall vision is that we are going to to a business driven product centric application world as i said before um, where we have digital products that support certain business domains and the challenge here is um, um, to to integrate the existing system, uh, existing on premise systems or standard systems maybe you also have some some digital products already you still have some monolithic applications where we will get rid of or we need to get rid of those monolithic applications but we cannot do this with a big bang we we will do that uh, with a, a iterative approach and also um in this case integration helps us to to uh, implement this this iterative approach to go step by step and and take uh, function by function from the monolith and maybe also migrate it to a microservice world or replace certain functionalities with standard SaaS offerings and all that kind of stuff. But the, the baseline here is that we need to, to integrate all those different types of systems and to, to make the heterogeneous um, IT system landscape more homogeneous. So this is the, the overall goal, why we need integration. So integration today, what we, um, what we have is that we have integration solutions that are built upon a monolithic middleware solution. So like Oracle SOA Suite or, or Oracle OSB, those are rock solid integration platforms perfectly fine for a lot of use cases with a lot of connectivity adapters and all that kind of stuff. But the underlying architecture is uh, related uh, to Oracle WebLogic. So you need also knowledge about the underlying infrastructure, which um, from today's perspective is also not that flexible to address the dynamic requirements of yeah, the, uh, of the workload, workload dynamics of the amount of data, which is uh, flowing through a, a integration, integration solution and all that kind of things. So yeah, we need something else. So we had mainly, as I said, ESP platforms and technologies to address integration concerns. And as you can see in this, in this, in this graphic, um, we have, the, those integration services, which is really um, a small piece of, of code because it's just about routing and transformations in most of the cases, right? Um, but you also have this, this gray box here, and this is the infrastructure layer. So you, as a developer, you were always required not just to focus on implementing implementing the integration logic, but you was you were also required to understand the underlying um, infrastructure, to leverage the infrastructure and use the infrastructure. This um, brought some kind of restrictions because you are bound to certain technologies because WebLogic um, or SOA Suite provides a certain set of technologies which you need to use to implement um, your integration solution. You are not able, or it's hard to, to use the latest and greatest technologies that are uh, available on the market in those um, use cases. So it was yeah, some kind of, um, yeah, um, Smart, uh, heavy to, to implement those modern solutions. So, and most of the time we integrate, we will build those integration solutions in a SOA style application architecture, right? 
I'm based on on patterns. So this is a book from from Gregor Hoppe, um, talking about in enterprise integration patterns. And those inter uh, so those integration patterns are valid until today, because they are not depending on any kind of technology, right? But in this slide, we see two um, things which we need to rethink. The one thing is the the uh, heavyweight infrastructure layer here. And the other thing is this that we, in the old days, we just thought of system to system integration when we talked about integration. And it's, it's more than that, than just system to system integration. But let's first, let us first talk about uh, the, the, um, the ESB infrastructure and why I think that it is no longer, longer capable to address all kinds of use cases. So we need to rethink, and this is what we are doing within this presentation. So we have got, uh, a bunch of new technology and con uh, concepts that re require, uh, requires to rethink what we've done so far. So we have all that cloud stuff, which is around now. We have IoT workloads, which we need to, uh, to uh, depict and integrate. We have big data architectures where we also have some, some uh, kind of, of integration requirements, which we need to depict. Um, we need to address hybrid um, um, integration scenarios. Uh, we have serverless um, technologies, which we can leverage for, uh, especially in, in batch, batch integration scenarios. And yeah, this this shows uh, the dilemma we have today, because um, those monolithic monolithic uh, ESP platforms are not capable to adopt all of those things and and cover everything what we see in this in this in this cloud of technology and concepts. Another problem what what uh, what we what we can see when we talk to to customers is that. Um, and I really like this analogy, which uh, which was originally from from Lucas Gillema. Um, this big hammer, so the the enterprise service bus. So we tried to to um, see a nail in each and every challenge in the integration space, and we took our hammer and we we nailed it. So uh, we we're trying to solve the problem by just hammering, even. If we have the screw, and it is not the best idea to to uh, work with a, a screw and a hammer, right? So um, we need something else there. And what we see today is that this this um, yeah this this um, monolithic complex uh, infrastructure we have, which is uh, have some some problems um, in the space of. Um, of uh, scalability. So what we uh, uh, often see at, at customer sites when they implement, it, and it doesn't matter if it's Oracle Service Bus, it also can be other vendors, um, integration platforms like a IBM or TIPCO or what else, um, is that you have one runtime where you deploy all your integration services to so you are not able to scale integration integrations individually and if one integration has a problem because the load for example is too high on a certain integration this also influences all the other integrations and all the other in integrations cannot work independently so this is a problem we, we just have one jvm when we work with weblogic and the osb and yeah, that's that's not the way, for example, how we can address IoT scenarios, right? Where we have a, a huge amount of data coming in and flowing in and, and needs to be processed. So we need something else. And integration is complex. I already mentioned we have um, different communication protocol, different data serialization format, different data structures. We have a lot of different non-functional um, prerequisite of the systems to integrate. So um, some systems have not 24 seven availability. They have different, uh, different availability um, 
SLAs. And we need to keep that all in mind. So we need to implement resiliency patterns. Um, and also this is at some point, um, yeah, hard to implement with all those standard platforms we, we were provided with. And also the thing, data privacy security, um, ESP solution was also always also seen as some kind of, yeah, let's implement the security concerns also in the ESP platform. Um, and we had uh, one customer in Germany that was also putting a, a ESP in the DMZ for exposing the, the, the services to the outside world because yeah, it's, it's a service platform for exposing web services to, to our partners. And no, we don't want the API gateway. We have an ESP and we use it for, for each and every use case. So the big hammer again, and now from my perspective, it's, it's um, our responsibility to, um, to solve those issues. Yeah. Integration is multi-dimensional. So as I said before, <clears throat> we um, originally just looked into horizontal integration requirements. This means system to system, but we have also this verti vertical integration where we have different requirements. So this is the, all, the, all the stuff with, with respect to API-led integration, right? There you have synchronous integrations and on a horizontal um, or on a horizontal uh, level, you have maybe batch integrations, you maybe have event-driven integrations and all that kind of things. So those are just two dimensions, but we also have a third dimension, which is cloud, because you need to think everything, um, as I said before, we live in a hybrid world, so we, we need to have an integration platform, which is capable to address the use cases or which is capable, capable to integrate both on-premise systems and cloud systems, <clears throat> as we will also see in the following. Some architectural considerations, um, requirements to modern integration solutions is that we, we, need, we, we need to come to the point that we need less expert knowledge when we, when we implement integration requirements. And this was the case before with those with those middleware platforms we, we had, because you need the specific knowledge about the platform, about the, the runtime and all that kind of stuff. So this was um, a huge investment because it was a lot of learning about a complex stack. And this is also something which scared people away from those implementing those solutions. Um, you also need to, to need a flexibility to choose a proper state of the art technology to address a certain concern. You need to address dynamic workloads. You need unlimited scalability and efficient resource consumption. This is, these are the requirements for, for modern integration solutions. And when you think about, um, um, architectures and, uh, at OPITS consulting, we, 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 um, we thought of a few postulates when we defining architectures on which basis we, we build these architectures. First of all, <coughs> sorry, the world is hybrid. So we also, we always have to keep in mind that we have on-premise on and cloud and not only one cloud vendor, but we will have multi-cloud scenarios in the near future. Nowadays it is, already the reality for some customers, but most customers, at least in Germany, do their first baby steps in the direction of cloud and they use, leverage the, the cloud services of single cloud vendor, but the future will be, and this is something which we also see in the market that people look in the, into different cloud vendors, also from a cost perspective, because some services are better and cheaper from one cloud vendor, the other ones from the other cloud vendor. So you have to, to keep that in mind. And um, from my perspective, if you build um, new um, integration solutions, those should adhere to cloud native 
principles, so 12 factor app and all that kind of things. Security is a first class citizen today and should be <coughs> should be in the in the uh, architecture at design time already and not afterwards because we don't have time for security we'll make it afterwards this is something we like it it was before and this should not be the case anymore um as I said, we have uh, horizontal and vertical um, integration directions. On a horizontal direction, we have asynchronous event-based integrations. On a vertical, we have synchronous API-led. <clears throat> and um, we also need well-defined intuitive APIs, which are driven by the business today when we, when we do um, synchronous API-led integration. And as I said before, system and, and data integration are no longer disjoint disciplines. So let's go to the solution strategy. Um, <coughs> sorry, I also have a picture. So um, this is the way I think integration solutions should be built today. So we have something like API exposure or API gateway. We have... Um, integration implementation that are lightweight which are isolated from each other and so they are containerized and are individually scalable and don't influence each other we also see that some use cases can be um, perfectly um, be depicted with with serverless functions so this is also be is, is also an option and um, last but not least, um, the event hub, which is a very central um, component for each um, integration platform for depicting a lot of, of use cases, <clears throat> as we will see when we talk about um, yeah, uh, um, different flavors of integration afterwards. <clears throat> yeah, we have. Here we have a, a technology overview, and I tried to to put the Oracle Cloud technologies into different tiers, um, which I or which we see um, in integration solutions. So integration solution have an API exposure tier, a service implementation tier, some kind of persistency tier, and a platform tier, and all those tiers. Oh, sorry. Too much talking today. Um, all those tiers are uh, defined by um, capabilities. So, for example, on the API exposure, we have a capability which is called authentication authorization or rate li limiting or OWASP 10 protection. On the service implementation um, tier, we have capabilities like transformation, like routing, like validation, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, what, you, what you need to, to see is that you address all, that kind, uh, all the, the capabilities on the different tiers by certain technologies. Um, so I, at this point, I spared out all the, the, um, the capabilities, but I, I tried to, to integrate all the, the um, the technologies delivered uh, by Oracle or the, 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 the Oracle Cloud Services. And uh, in the next chapter, we will also go over um, some yeah, integration flavors. And <coughs> <coughs> we'll talk about those services and how they can be used in more detail. So, um, before we get into this, I, I also wanted to state that you may have heard of something called uh, Kubernetes. And uh, I think that Kubernetes is also, yeah, a, a, basic, a basic runtime or platform component for, for modern integration solutions, right? To, to implement, you implement uh, your, your, um, your integrations, if you implement cloud native integration solutions and run them um, on, on top of, of Kubernetes. 
So let's go um, into some use cases or flavors, like I called it. Um, I said uh, integration is multi-dimensional and complex. And we already mentioned that we have API-led integration, we have event-based integration, cross-domain and inter-domain integration. We have um, closed apps and um, commercial off the shelf integrations. We have data ingestion and change data capture, which is a specific flavor of, of data integration. And we have SaaS integration. And in the following, I will, uh, I will show you how this can be depicted with the Oracle Cloud solutions. So on a on a um, vertical API-led uh, integration layer, um, we have um, um, we need to to expose um, data from our internal systems to the outside world, or data for uh, from a, a SaaS system to the outside world to our partners, to to customers, and so on, uh, uh, and and other consumers. And how can we do that? We have different consumers we have an api exposure layer which is um, implemented with web application firewall for example for OWASP uh, top, uh, 10 protection we have an api gateway for exposing the services for yeah for um for handling authentication use cases for um um, also doing rate limiting and all that kind of things. And <coughs> we have um, our backend systems. Um, so, and those backends ca can be implemented in the cloud native way. They also um, can be implemented um, in a yeah in a API composition pattern. So, if you expose um, a composed API service um, for maybe as a as a backend for front end, so for a mobile device or something like that, so that the mobile device don't have to to be that chatty. This maybe can be depicted with GraphQL or something like that. And you can maybe also implement uh, your backend functionality with, with, with functions. So from that perspective, the OCI service of interest is Web Application Firewall, API Gateway, OKE, so Oracle Kubernetes Engine, and functions. And the patterns that are interesting at this point is uh, API Gateway, backend for frontend, <coughs> API composition and route, routing. Yeah, horizontal integration, as I mentioned, is um, on a cross-domain level, we, we communicate using event. <coughs> and for inter-domain communication, um, we should use some kind, or we can use some kinds of optimized protocols. So what, what does this mean? So maybe not use, um, HTTP, but use something uh, something like uh, gRPC, uh, so which is an optimized binary com uh, communication protocol uh, synchronously. And also keep in mind, uh, so events are first class citizens like APIs, so they should should be managed like that and described <clears throat> like that. Maybe with async API, which is the same as Open API is for for uh, REST APIs to describe your your uh, message channels to to describe your your messages. Um, you you also can use Avro or Protobuf. So um, on the API side, you you are using an event an API first approach, and the same applies to to event driven architectures where you should do an event design first approach. If you look to um, to uh, what in horizontal integration means to um, <clears throat> with from an implementation perspective, we have um, two uh, two domains here, and those two domains are um, talking to each other using um, 
business events. So um, this this guy here is uh, publishing an event. This guy is consuming it and is um, is forwarding it to the to the to the um, to the um, business service. And because of the fact that this interdomain communication is, is synchronous, <clears throat> we need to keep in mind because it, it runs over a network, the network is unreliable. And so um, we have another pattern which, which applies here and this is the service mesh pattern. So we have also have to consider that we, uh, that we, we tackle um, those, unre also those uh, unreliable uh, network errors or issues. And for this, we can use uh, the service mesh concept um, where we can declare um, things like circuit breakers, back pressure, and all that kind of stuff to not being required to implement those things ourselves in our <clears throat> in our applications because this is something which is yeah infrastructure code and this should be declared and not no longer implemented right so um, when it comes to closed apps and uh, commercial off the shelf integration we can implement that uh, leveraging a lightweight ESB implementation which offers also adapters for common uh, commercial off the shelf uh, systems. Um, <clears throat> and what do we need to consider when we integrate those closed apps or um, commercial off the shelves integrations? Those um, applications often don't have a, a, um, an API. <clears throat> if they have an API, they have most of the time very technical APIs and we don't want to expose those technical APIs to, to anyone. So we need some kind of, of, of uh, uh, yeah, translator in between. Maybe also the, those systems don't speak the, the, the same language. So we need some kind of protocol transformation and also data transformation. So <clears throat> how can we do that? Um, we might have the, the use case that we we need to, to expose information from our commercial off the shelf systems to the outside world, to our partners, to, to our customers, so to, to external consumers. So we have our API gateway consisting of the web application firewall, the OCI API gateway. The integration logic is um, implemented or can be impl implemented um, um, in a microservice style or in the cloud native application uh, style and uh, run on top of, of Oracle Kubernetes cloud service or Oracle Kubernetes engine, sorry. Um, and if those services or those, those uh, commercial off the shelf systems also need to, to uh, um, talk to each other, we can, we can do that uh, using the, um, the event hub. So if we have a, a data change here in this system, which also um, is interesting for the other uh, commercial off the shelf system, then we just publish an event. This event is consumed by this guy and this guy updates the, the other system, right? Um, and um, those integration services can be implemented using lightweight ESP implementations like Apache Camel, for example, which is a very good framework for all those use cases and which can easily be integrated with um, a broad range of microservices frameworks, which are around these days. <clears throat> but we also have um, use cases for, um, for functions. If we, um, if we um, integrate, for example, a, a object storage, and uh, every time we, we, we put a new object to object storage and we wanted to update a certain system, we can, um, um, we can uh, publish a respective event to, to Oracle streaming or something like that. And then it is consumed and the systems are up updated accordingly. So um, this is everything about this uh, closed apps and uh, commercial off the shelf integration. Then we come to data ingestion and change data capture. It's a very specific use case of data integration as I already mentioned. 
because it, it's a one-way integration yeah because we are we are um, listening to the um, to the uh, to the database logs and um, capture every change in the database pull that uh, and 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 push that out to 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 an event hub maybe kafka or uh, oracle streaming and then we from from that event hub we can um, register different consumers to those change data events so that the the respective um, services systems can be updated accordingly um, and I think this is also a very powerful um, pattern um, and this can be implemented uh, mainly so we have here an autonomous database uh, we have Oracle Golden Gate which which um, which streams all the changes from the ATP instance to the event hub um, which then is consumed by our applications def uh, deployed to OKE. Last but not least, we have this uh, SaaS integration topic. And SaaS integration is today also a very important thing um, because it is um, also relevant when you wanted to extend a certain SaaS system, you need to do some some uh, kind of integration you need to implement it um, and you also have to um, yeah two main scenarios so you have a cloud to cloud integration and you have a cloud to on-prem integration um, especially when it comes to on-prem integration you also should have a communication uh, over an on-premise api gateway uh, and access your <clears throat> your on-premise integrations uh, accordingly. On uh, OCI services of inter uh, interest in this in this area is uh, Oracle Integration Cloud service, and uh, then we also need uh, VPN and Fast Connect for for connecting um, on-prem and the cloud. Or you leverage if you don't want to to implement a a API gateway on-prem, or you don't have an API gateway, you can also leverage the respective um, um, on-premise agent pro, uh, provided by Oracle Integration Cloud. <clears throat> and from a, from architecture perspective, it looked like that. So on-prem, I, I depicted an API gateway. Here, I, I, I put in Kong. Um, why? Because yes, we have. Oracle OCI uh, API gateway available, but currently we cannot we cannot um, um, we cannot distribute this gateway. So we cannot we cannot put the, this gateway instance or run it on on premise. Now this this was possible with with the Oracle API platform cloud service, or is possible, but. Um, so you can also, if you have Oracle API Platform Cloud Service, for sure you can also put the Oracle API Platform Cloud Service here, but from a cost perspective, um, I think most, um, most, most customers will go for this open source thingy. And yeah, you have a SaaS system, you have OCI, uh, OIC, and you have a service which wanted to communicate with on-premise systems and entering your on-premise world through an API gateway and integrate the data um, with the on-premise systems even uh, uh, by, by directly talking to the cloud native applications or talking to an integration service which publishes events or updates uh, commercial off-the-shelf systems um, accordingly. So a lot of stuff. Um, what I don't wanted to say with this talk is that everything was bad what we did so far. What I wanted to, to say is that we need to rethink. I hope this, this, um, this point gets crystal clear with it, with, with, within my, my, my presentation. Um, I wanted to, to motivate to, to bring the old and the new world together. And hopefully with the pattern I showed within this presentation, it's, it's, 
gets a bit clearer what integration really means, how many different use cases and the use cases or flavors I showed you are not complete. There are a lot of other challenges in the integration space, with, uh, space which also needs to be addressed. But those are the ones which I was aware of, which are the ones which I see at, at customer sites when I'm at customers. Yeah. And integration is now more than more relevant than ever in a hybrid multi-cloud world. And um, yeah, with that, I think I'm, I'm mostly done. Um, I'm not sure, do we have any questions? Or have we uh, Hola a todos. any time Si tienes preguntas, por favor, de, déjanos ya ver. Okay, so far so good. No questions yet. Okay. Then I think everything is clear. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but everything also, is clear. <laughs> but I also put my put my um, oh, my contact here. informations there. So we have one question. Have, oh, sorry, go one ahead. Question. If you have any questions afterwards, if you wanted to give me some feedback on on this presentation, or if you wanted to discuss some 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 things, yeah, don't hesitate to contact me, please. Okay, one question from Juan Pablo Gonzalez. Can I mm -hmm. call a on-premise web service from Oracle integration using Oracle VPN? Sorry, I, I think I didn't get it. Um, so can I call a, a Oracle integration using uh, Oracle? A on-premise web service from Oracle integration, integration using Oracle VPN. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure about that currently. I know that, that if you wanted to call an on-premise solution directly from, um, from, from OIC, then you need to establish, um, the, um, or you, you need to install the, the on-premise agent. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if you, if you can, you can uh, do it <clears throat> using the, the, the OIC VPN, uh, OCI VPN, sorry. It should, from my perspective, but I haven't tried it yet. Let's put it in that way. Okay, Jorge Vega, what, what is the recommendation for integration, for integrate more that one cloud. Integrate more than one cloud. Like I have Amazon, AWS, and I'd like to use Oracle Cloud for somehow. How can, is there any good practice to integrate both? As always, it, 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 it depends on the, <clears throat> on the, on the systems that, that needs to be integrated, right? On, um, and where, where, where I, I run my, my integration platform. So in this scenario, you can run your integration platform in Oracle Cloud, reaching out to AWS, or if AWS, and I'm not sure about that, if AWS have a, a, um, a similar solution, so an iPaaS solution, solution, so integration platform as a service like, like OIC, um, then you you have to to see if um, if this is available, um, and um, um, yeah, where where you implement it. Um, a, 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 a general best practice is uh, is is hard to uh, to uh, to to uh, to define here, because we need to to look at the use cases, right? Okay, we have one more question because in Amazon, we have the S3 that is Amazon Simple Storage Service. Mm -hmm. Do we have something like this in Oracle Cloud? Uh, 
a <clears throat> a this that's the opposite uh, of F s3 in 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 oracle cloud yes if you do have if you can yeah, if your oracle have, has any kind of support like that uh support for connecting to s3 no 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 like if i'm using amazon i can use amazon s3 right yeah Give them, I'd like to move on my whole application, my whole environment to Oracle Cloud. Ah, so a, a migration from, from Amazon to, to Oracle. Yes. I Do I have some similar service? Yeah, you can. Like uh, SN3 to Oracle Cloud? Yeah, you can use object storage at this point, Oracle object storage. Mm, good. Uh, hola a todos, ¿tienes más preguntas, por favor? Es la hora de hacerla. Si quisieras también, meten la, el chat. Ok, give once, give twice. Hey, hey, go. Thank you, that was an amazing presentation, Svin. I learned a lot. Thank you for attend. It was uh, a pleasure to to uh, to present to you all. Okay, guys.